Welcome to 91 Reasons, a pop culture fueled rocket into the far reaches of nerd culture. Featuring your hosts, Jeff, Rachel, Luna, Austin, and Josie. It's Tucker time. Hey, it's another episode of 91 Reasons. Now, here's what happened, folks. I. This is Jeff Tucker, the voice, 91 Reasons, whatever. I, um. <coughs> I did the episode about the house on Beach Boulevard, the beach house. And I didn't put it up. It was still raw. And Rachel said, I got to hear that. And I got to know what's going on with that episode. So that um, she wanted to do her rebuttal. Not a rebuttal, but like her addendum, right? You want to add to it. I Your perspective. Wanted, as being part of it, I wanted to know the story that was being told. And I wanted my version of the story. Yeah, okay. so we sat and we listened to it. Uh, coughs and all, unedited and raw. And... <laughs> Uh, it was funny listening to it, right? I, I, it was more emotional to me than funny. Yeah, well, that's I'm what gonna I have meant. a different take than you. I'm gonna. I'm, no, I'm never nervous to be on the podcast. I'm not a shy person at all. Okay. And I never have a problem. Whatever episode we're doing, I jump in. Everyone knows me. I put my two cents in. Usually from the kitchen, but I put it in. But this, this is a very. I don't know. Sensitive subject. Why is that? Because it means so much to me. And you've had a podcast for how many years now? And we have not, like, broached this subject. We've not had the no, Beach House episode No, yet. what happened was... Every time you want to, I try to push you away from it. I don't know if you noticed that, but... Oh, yeah, no, you, you've you derailed every time I've tried to sit down and do that episode. Because there's there's no way that you could do it justice. And, and you did a really good job, and you, you kind of, for the person that don't know anything of the story, get suggestions. From an outsider's beach... point of view, I told I, I think but, I told it pretty well. Right. I, well, here's the thing. I told it, but I didn't break down crying or anything. No, you don't have to be emotional. There's thousands of stories in those two years. Oh, yeah, no, but you have to... Layer more, you have upon to, layer you have to upon... Decide... There's but, so many people right, that but, you didn't even mention. Right, but there's here's so the many, thing. I told the first hour of it. And if there's more hours to it, we can add to it. But you got to start somewhere. I know. And I, noticed, and I think I, that's I have why... No, wait, wait. I have noticed you've been putting that episode off and off and off and off. And I finally just said... Some, somebody was... Um, it was Aldo who said, Man, where's that episode? Because I mentioned it at the live episode two years ago. I know. But again, it's a multiple episode story. Oh, definitely. To do it justice. And I want it to have justice. Uh-huh. And in my perfect world, it is a movie. And every single person that lived in that house would be sitting on this couch doing this interview as well. Like, I feel like but here's everybody the thing. needs and, to be part some, of this story. Some people have offered. Um, Maribeth offered to come over and do it. And it just never materialized. I never put it together to do the episode. Now that I've done the first one, having Maribeth over... Or Johnny Rockstar over, or I mean, I didn't even mention Johnny. Johnny lived with Demani. Uh huh. Um, well, because the Demani part. Andrea, Andrea. But the Demani part. The Demani part's more interesting than because the Johnny things. I could have Johnny on the show and do a whole hour just talking about Johnny. That's what I'm saying. Each person has a story. Do you know that Andrea now works at the California Welcome Center? She works at our home. Yeah, that's she sits at the little table where people come in and ask to get brochures and find out all the fun things to do in Buena Park. And she lived there. And that's got to be so bizarre for her yeah. to sit there so what in we our should kitchen do, and event- give away brochures to Knott's Berry Farm. <laughs> Eventually, we should just go and record an episode walking through the house. I, well, I would Good be luck talking. with that, right? I don't go in that house. I, like, literally, don't. But the second we pull on the property, I'm in tears. Driving down Beach Boulevard, I try, I, I glance, I go, now, there it is. Now but tell I me. I don't look. Now tell me, after having described the chaos and the craziness, why does. Oh, don't does, get me wrong, this is not a fairy tale. Why does it have that response? When I was living it, I was like, what the heck am I well, doing? Well, let me ask you that. <laughs> While you're living it, would you have ever said, "Boy, I can't wait these to look will back be the on these"? Most amazing memories. No. Start of the most amazing love story I ever had. You don't know no. when you're in it how important it's going to be till you're out of it. But the best thing is that house is not a historical landmark now, and it's maybe not going it's anywhere. too sensitive for me now. But in my little old lady age, you can roll me up in a wheelchair, and those same stories, our story, is going to be there. Yeah. 
It's never going to be bulldozed. It's never going to go away. It's never going to go away. Our great great grandkids will be. That's the house that grandma and grandpa got. That's where they started their story. So, what did you think about me telling Tim like? We're standing exactly where I got married. Well, that's exactly how I felt when we went back. Yeah. So. It's weird, right? Yeah, it's very weird. I mean... Okay, so take us to the beginning. The beginning? What's the first time you went over? Um, you mentioned in your episode. Yes. Uh, I don't know why Laura picked me up. I don't remember details. My memory is very foggy. I remember pulling up to the house and being like, this is where Jeff lives? Oh, he just, it's new. He just moved here. They just bought it. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's it's being remodeled. It doesn't look very good inside. Keep that in mind and blah, blah, blah. It gives off a Monsters Adams it family vibe. It was a Monsters house. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean. <laughs> and the first thing I remember was they're, they're upstairs. So we went upstairs and you're playing Frisbee in the hallway. Yeah, the that, most enormous hallway I've ever seen Did that in my impress life. you? Well, it didn't, just the whole fact that your family was buying this house was like, what are they going to do? Because you didn't have all the tenants yet when I... No, no. We were, yeah. still, we were still collecting our wacko yeah. brigade. So it was just very strange. I remember meeting your mom. She was still in the smaller bedroom downstairs, yeah. mm-hmm. um, up in her bed. I don't think she left her bed the whole time I visited her no. that first night. She, she was a lot like Charlie's <laughs> grandparents in the chocolate movie yeah. where they don't get out of bed. Because I've got video of her like, I'm in bed. Yeah, I know, Ma. You're barely out of bed. What? Jeff had the greatest mom. I have to go on record with that. Um, I mean, she was in my life such a short period of just a few years, but she affected me more than probably anyone I've ever met in my life. Well, let me ask you this. Why do you think she liked you so much? There's an answer, an actual answer. Well, what's not listening? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. What do you mean? Because I made you happy. Because you made me happy. You were because all the girls fame. before you were terrible people. Right. Horrible, awful people. And she saw me go from one terrible person to the next. And finally, here's this nice one. It's enough that and she, she hated, overlooked all my flaws. She hated that you were from Riverside. She called me that girl from Riverside for like a year. <laughs> Even after I moved in. Where's that girl from Riverside? Where's that Riverside girl? I didn't think I was ever going to have a name besides that girl from Riverside. But <laughs> it's like you're a tuna. Hey, tuna. Yeah, I was a girl yeah. from Riverside. I met her in Riverside. Oh, she's Riverside now. Yep. Riverside girl. Yeah. Um, so you you um, left your situation and moved in with Lauren Steve for like two weeks, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. They got me out of a situation I was not happy in in Riverside. It's not a secret that I was married before. Oh, my God. What? Yeah. Young in high school. Thankfully, not because I was pregnant, never had any kids with the guy. I just, I had lost my dad when I was 14 and it put me on a a path of destruction. And I just ran away from home. I got into so much trouble with school and in general. And I needed someone to save me, someone to get me out of there. And Jay was a good guy and he was a good friend. And Different Jay than the one in the bicycle shorts. Yeah, way different. Um, we should have never got married. We'd probably still be best friends today had we not got married. Um, but he was my way out and right. I, I loved him for that. And right. As a young 15 year old girl, you look at that and go, oh, that's love. Like in love, love. And you think you're in love. And you know, I defied my parents and Ran away and, you know, the police and my well, mom, they tried to get me back. But it's like, okay, do you want her to go to a, a delinquent home or do you want to get permission for his parents to keep her? And my mom finally gave in. She could, It was a battle. She just lost my dad and she was struggling as it was. And it just seemed easier to keep the peace, I think, honestly. So I became an adult at 15 and I worked full time and had a husband. And it was a very interesting life for about six years until I At found 15, you. I was still playing with Transformers. Yeah, we lived a very different life. <laughs> I don't blame my dad. You can't say, oh, my dad died and I messed up my life because of it. Because everything happens for a reason. And your mother taught me that. Your mother told me everything of your past, you can't deny it. You can't say, I wasn't married to that person. I didn't date that girl. You can't deny those things because they make you who you are and they led you to where you are now. Right. I would have never found you. I would have never found Laura and Steve. I would have never, none of this would have ever happened. Well, I, I, I was, that girl from I was talking about on the other show that you were the aggressor. You were the one who said, 100%. I'm going to make this work. Yep. And what's, what's important and interesting to say about that is that's what I needed at that point. Because 
after the terrible relationships I had had, and, and be, let's be honest, they were silly high school relationships, but they were terrible. I was treated very terribly. Um, I wasn't, I, you could tell, I wasn't going to pursue you. I wasn't going to try to make it work because A, I said, I was married. she's married. It's not a good, <laughs> why bother? Doesn't matter if she's interested in me. And also, I, I've been so backstabbed by women that she's probably no different and why should I put the effort? I mean, I was at a really dark place. But I had just turned um, I think 20 when I met you. Mm-hmm. I had no success in, in romantic relationships of any kind. I had just come out of dating uh, a girl in college who who said I was too young for her. She was 23 and I was too young for her because I couldn't drink. And I kept telling her, even if I was 21, I, I don't drink. So I, does that change things? So I just was so disillusioned. And thankfully, you came along. And I, I again, I give credit to you and the circumstance. Because the circumstance said, we've got a room for you. And that's what happened. You left Laura and Steve's house and moved in with Tiffany down the, down the, the hallway. And suddenly, I went from... Not having a girlfriend or any women in my life and watching a lot of people get dates and being very like, why are they dating? What have they got that I don't have? Well, the problem was, is when you're that desperate, women can smell it and they don't want to be anywhere near you. But I didn't know you were as, mm, what should I, should I word this? Awful. You can no, say no, it. No, no, no. Not awful. Angry. No. Inexperienced as you were. Oh yeah, totally. I was a mature person who had. Like, socially, more... I, I don't know how to say it. I mean, I've been married for six years. No, I had boyfriends before that involved relationships. At 20? So when I got with you, I was like, well, hello, we like each other. We, we're hooking up for the night. Why would I stay in your room? Like, you literally kicked me out of your room the first night. And as an adult, I'm like, doesn't he want me to spend the night? Like, oh, that yeah, was no, another no. thing where that wasn't even in your mind no, for a long time. You were just like, nah. I'm telling you, at 20... I was still I was like, playing oh, with Transformers. Isn't he cute. He's so he's innocent and he's being serious right now and he wants me to go sleep on a couch. And I couldn't like yeah, the first night, couldn't believe the that. The first night you stayed I over. I just expected, well, I'm going home with them. I'm going to spend the night with them. I'll sleep with them. See if they're going to work out or not. I like them. We'll yeah. start dating. But-, but but the first night <laughs> I slept on my bed and in the same room you yes. slept on a couch. It's not like you were downstairs on a couch. No, but that was my point. And you made me go over to the couch. Oh, no, you need to move to the couch now. It's time to sleep. I'm like, what is he talking yeah, about? Yeah, it was it, it was a lot like the <laughs> plot of Big. You know, when yeah. he invites a what's-her-name over for a sleepover. But I found it so cute. I found it very... It just, well, it know, must have been refreshing instead more. of some guy just attacking you. Like, well, I, wasn't, I wasn't that guy. I have never been that guy. No, I, I don't know who now. that guy is. I didn't know that then. <laughs> And I think if I had to, um, this is really delving into your psyche, but I mean, that's what 91 Reasons is, is it's, a, it's an exploration of how bizarre I am. Uh, you know, we've gone through Austin's Asperger's, right? And we've taken all these tests with Austin, and I've taken them too. And I, I, he got it from me. I have a touch of it. Because... And not in like an antisocial way, because I'm, you know, at parties, I don't, I'm loud and crazy, but I don't pick up on signals. I don't see when like, when you're like doing the Chrissy Snow and rolling your shoulder, flirting, (laughs) I'm not getting it. I think you've got a bug on you or something. So uh, most of my relationships, the women had to do all the work because I'm not getting it. And that was one of those things like, what does she want in the bedroom here? Um, she's married. I'm not going to do anything with her. She's She belongs. You know, that other guy owns her. You know what I mean? God. That weird kind of, <laughs> it's that bro code, right? Which I'm not a bro, so I don't know why I was adhering to it. But yeah, no, that was the weird thing. And um, The whole I'm leaving my husband for you didn't... Uh... No, I don't know what you're up to. I have the letter if you want to read yeah, it. Yeah, but I don't know if you're leaving day. because you're getting out and I'm the rebound guy. That, that never works out. Uh-oh. You know, we almost lost our friends because nobody thought we were going to be together long enough to make it work. Because you were coming from a rebound and I'm a whack job. And boy, have we proved them wrong. But the funniest part, and I think I've told this on the show, is the next morning, word gets out that I've got a girl in my room. 
This has never happened before. So, you know when all the dwarves peek over the bed when Snow White's sleeping and they yeah. go, peek, peek, It was peek, almost peek, exactly peek. like That's that. That's exactly, yeah. suddenly, people are knocking at my door at 8.30, Jeff. And I'm like, wait a minute. No one's ever knocked on my door before. What do you want, Jimmy? Just, uh, good morning. <coughs> no, I know what you're up to. I know what you're up to. And the consensus, what am I going to say? What, what am I going to say? I don't know. I got, oh my goodness, like, people want to come in and shake my hand. It was very weird, yeah. like, the yeah. mood was very, like... I got, I got almost... They almost wanted to... Wow, to, she's really there. Yeah, they almost wanted to bake a cake. Yeah. Because <gasps> it was... He's not gay. He's not gay. That's that what I was lot. getting at. It was confirmation. Almost everyone yeah. in the house that met me was just like, I always thought he was gay. I'm like, oh, this isn't good. This is not a good sign. And you're like, well, we haven't slept together, so I know. the well, jury's that's what still I was out. Saying. I was like, Are they, is, this, <laughs> is this, like, red flags? Are they all trying to tell me? The jury's still out. I thought he was out. cute and innocent and sweet and... And maybe, maybe he's, just, he's just gay. Maybe he just likes like, men. I just left that. I'm not going back to that. I've been down that road. <laughs> and here's the thing. I, the stuff that the actions I took didn't help to dissuade people from that opinion. My first job was at La Caja Faux Dinner Theater, where I helped men get dressed as women. I was president of the drama club. I, I wrote plays and acted and was flamboyant. Tried I mean, out for cheerleading in high school. Yeah. <laughs> but every one of those... All the flags were there. Every one of those... <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't do tall flags. Uh-huh. No, every one of those had a particular reason, right? I wrote plays because I thought, foolishly, girls would be impressed with that. They're not. If you can throw a football or dunk a basketball, they're impressed. If you can write a three-act play, they could care less. I tried out to be a cheerleader because I thought... If I could ride on the bus with the cheerleaders, one of them might want to date me. I was really (laughs) trying to think outside the box. But the problem was that every one of these actions gave off gay, gay. (laughs) And here's the other thing. All of my friends were gay. Everybody I hung out with was gay. So imagine like, imagine like girls going, well, he can't like me. He's gay. So yeah, there was this, I mean, there was this big... And I'm sure my mother, who wouldn't have cared either way, was like, oh, I might get a grandkid out of this, right? <laughs> so, you slowly just moved in. It wasn't so slowly. It was pretty fast. I mean, it was a couple of days. No, I, I, I've said that in the other show. You moved yeah. in quite f- quickly. Right. So, what was it like living at the beach house? Good and bad. Tons of fights and tons of gatherings. Tons of parties. It ranges all over the place. Like things come to my mind, instant Christmas memories and porch parties and all the things that you spoke to. And then just like a battle in the hallway because somebody won't get out of the bathroom that doesn't have a door and you have to listen to them the whole time they're in there. Like just There was a constant war going on with the bathroom for some reason, getting access to it, people going in and not coming out. Well, you say four bathrooms, but I mean, there was like 20 people living there. So even four bathrooms was not enough. No. And here's the thing. Um, I, I bought one of these, they don't even sell them anymore. It was this little machine that was a little bigger than a toothbrush and you put wax on the end of it and it was a little cup that vibrated and you would, it was a tooth polisher, right? So I would polish my teeth thinking they were going to get nice and white. And then one day, like somebody took it and I remember walking through the house going, who would steal Something so gross. I'm grossed out using it. What do you want with it? And that was the moment I said, because we all had a drawer. Remember we had a drawer in the bathroom? I said, I'm not using the drawer. I'm getting a caddy and I'll carry my stuff. everyone started doing that. And then everybody had locks on their bedroom door. I mean, it was very like, you had to keep everything locked up. Well, yeah, because people were thieves. You had a wardrobe and you'd open it up and it would have like bread, tortilla chips, Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Like the same three items yeah. you could keep stored there. It was all I ever ate. Well, the kitchen was far away, so I I bought a little mini fridge, and I could make cold sandwich. sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. I, things I never ate my entire <laughs> life until I moved in with you. I well, never you had a roast beef wait. sandwich. You were a vegetarian when you yes. moved in. Yes. You were going to save the animals. Yeah, meat is murder. And what happened? I love meat. <laughs> I'm sorry, animals. Well, what, what particular <laughs> meat? This is the joke. What particular meat? How long were you I a vegetarian? I was out then? partying with how, Tiffany. Wait, wait, how long were you a vegetarian? About 18 months. 18 months. Mm-hmm. And then what? 
Ended it. And we had a craving, and it was late at night, and the only thing open was Jack in the Box. And I don't even think they are meat, so I probably didn't even cheat that first no, time. No, you gave your cardboard. But I had the tacos at Jack in the Two Box. Two tacos I for a dollar. Two. I just, yeah, she talked me into it. And then I just never looked back after that. And I but you kept giving me trouble anyways. You, well, the very first thing you said to me, I don't even know if you remember this, on one of our first dates out is, I don't know if I can eat date a girl that doesn't eat steak. That's what you told me. Do you, I believe that. I'd, I'd say that now. You're like, I don't know if I can date a girl that doesn't eat steak. And I was like, oh my God. He's every time. problem with me not eating meat. Every time you ask me what I want for dinner, what do I say? Steak. Of course. <laughs> That's what I grew up on. But I also never drank soda. I didn't even know what it tasted like. I didn't have it as a kid very often. And now it, you're addicted. I, now you've given it up for like 15 years. And I've drank it my whole life since I had. I had to give it up. I was gonna, it was going to kill me. Yeah, me too. See what you've done to me? Well, you just quit. I would never, ever eat salsa. I can't live without it now. Like, But I gave you things too. You didn't eat onions. And they go on everything I eat my entire yeah. life. Well, it was either... Deal with the smell or join the club. Exactly. So, so. you're stuck. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so we kept our stuff in our rooms. It was a very bizarre, very, probably the closest to like a dorm college lifestyle, but not a hip dorm, more like a dorm in the 70s where all the hippies went. That yeah, were rebelling just, life. Like a circus. And had nowhere to go because their parents wouldn't keep them anymore. And yeah. You never it was, knew it was, it was on Island a of daily the, it was Island of the Misfit basis toys. who would show up at the door because mom would not say no to anybody. No, anybody would need a they place. They could be a druggie. They could be a single mom. They could be a serial killer because I'm kind of thinking Keith was. Um, and Two she, questions. She would not say no. She'd be like, of course I have room. If I had to put you in the closet down the hall, under the stairs, we're going to find you a spot. Yeah. And you met so many interesting people. It was, I mean, it's if it's not a movie, it is a really big book because like each person is a chapter each person has a story i think it would be so fun to find those people from the ones that are still living and so let's talk about specific events which are funny okay thanksgiving 1995 i know where you're going go ahead oj yes <laughs> so most young people have no idea but oj simpson for a while was the most famous criminal on the planet Everybody had an opinion whether he was guilty or innocent of killing uh, Nicole Brown, Simpson, and Ron Goldman. No, I think 90% of the people knew he did it, and there was like 10%. My mother led the leader of the yeah. pack. So your mom, <laughs> your mom believed he was innocent. To her dying day, with every breath she took, with everything in her body, she loved that. Yeah, see, I haven't, I haven't really brought up your mom on the show. Well, she's just as crazy. Your she's mom's a whole story. character, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, but so she was convinced he was innocent. Convinced. So Thanksgiving, we've got a giant table in the living room. Tons There's like of people. twenty people having dinner. It looks like a, a Norman a Rockwell mm -hmm. thing, right? And somebody brings up OJ, <laughs> and we start talking about OJ being guilty because the trial is going on, right? Right. And your mother got so mad, she broke her fork. She did. We never forgot that. You, it was she so go, you, funny. you son of a bitch. He's innocent. Bing, Bing. and the fork breaks. Yeah. <coughs> That's crazy. That was just one of the many occasions at the house. The the one you said you have taped is actually one of my favorite memories. So I'm kind of thrilled that you ran around with the video recorder that day. Um, and it's a really good way to see some of the people that live there and get an idea of what life was yeah, like the at four, the beach house. Well, that's Fourth of July. Uh, 93? I think it's 93. Yeah. Because my brother was I'm not here. at Knott's. My brother flew out, so you got to meet my yeah. my brother with his machete and his hillbilly ways. He fit right in at the house. Oh, yeah. No. Um, he was welcome <laughs> with open arms. <laughs> um, one it, of us. One of us. It was just fun. It was a lot of fun. Do you remember the time Beach Boulevard flooded? Oh, my God. I was working at Movie Land Wax Museum, and you, we were all concerned. I called home. I'm like... They're saying that the street is gone and that yeah. I literally might not be able to walk And home. it was. It was really it was gone. gone. And I and was, it was young. about like a 20 minute walk. I was young and in love and I'm like, I'm not staying. I'm going home to my man. I got to get home. So I literally went upstream like against crazy current. Like it was a street that you couldn't even see that there was a street there and found our house on mm. Beach Boulevard and 
I lost my shoe, my new shoes. I was so upset. One of the shoes got taken and one of the currents grabbed it off my foot. And our house, when you drive by, if you go look at the beach house, you'll see it has a porch and it's up a ways. I don't know how, like maybe two feet high or three no, feet No, it's high. higher than that. Is it? Yeah. Is it higher than that? There's steps leading up I just saw you guys were all on the patio and the water was still there on that porch, but not heavy. It wasn't going in the house yet. But um, I remember seeing the house because it's so humongous. And I could see it down the road and I just kept telling myself, you can make it. Like, seriously, old school, crazy woman going yeah. through water. Like I'll never days. go hungry again. I've got to get home. I was frozen to the bone and I made it home. <laughs> I was not staying at work any longer than I had to. That was a crazy... We saw crazy weather. Buena Park doesn't have crazy weather. And the years we lived there, yeah. I bet, was like some of the biggest records. It hailed. We have pictures of us in the snow. Yeah, it was completely white. Beach Boulevard yeah. was white. And I have pictures of all of us. We went at, like outside to stand and we watch had to, it. We had to see it. It was, it was unlike anything we'd ever experienced. Yeah. We also all went outside at like 3 a.m. to watch them move the Whitaker James house, mm -hmm. which is another historical house that is now located right next to ours. They put all the historical houses together, which is awesome now. Um, but they, when they went to move it, they literally took the house in two parts and put it on a truck and closed off Beach Boulevard yeah. and, and we brought all, it we, to us. We all went out and watched we it. We all went outside. We're like, there's a giant house coming towards our house. It was so cool. There's so many little memories. Of course, us getting married. We had a 50s wedding. It was a beautiful wedding. Oh. What about the pirate engagement party? <laughs> explain explain what that is. That was your 21st birthday. And I thought you were just throwing a really big birthday party. People do that on special numbers. And this is a special number. And you you and your mom started planning it. And I want, I'm your girlfriend. So I wanted to be part of the planning. And I was trying to bond with your mom still. Because I was still that girl from Riverside at that point. Rachel, you're not part of the party planning committee. I was trying really hard. And your mom was not having it. She didn't even let me see the invites before they got sent out. And I was like, what the heck, woman? And she was like, you were going... You, I saw the list and you were inviting like your kindergarten teacher, like pretty much anyone you've ever known your entire life to this birthday party. And I just didn't get it. I was just like, why? What is the big deal? And I guess I was just getting kind of upset because I was being left out of it anyway. So I'm right. feeling like that so special then the, attention. The party night comes. It's a pirate, pirate themed party. Pirate themed. We yeah. were all done up. The place was done up. And My mom went all there's out. There's a giant cake with a treasure map on it, a little uh -huh. treasure chest. And what's in the treasure chest? You guys said like X marks the spot. And then everybody saying happy birthday to you. And then they said um, to me to open up the treasure chest. And suddenly I'm involved. So I'm like, what do you mean to me? I don't yeah. want, I put, and you know suddenly what? I'm put on spot in front of 200 people. I was like, no, no, I don't want to do it. Here's like, the thing. We actually have pictures of this. Yeah, I look disgusted. Yeah, you look so because upset. Because I was in a bad mood anyways. And I was like, oh, now they're going to involve me? Oh, I don't think so. And so I was in the I, treasure chest. <laughs> Is your engagement yes. ring to get married to me? And the reason I didn't see the invites is because they explained that in the invite that it was a surprise <laughs> engagement that you're yeah. going to be asking yeah. to marry me in front of everybody. Yeah. That's why I was and why it had no part of it. It was obviously a very big moment for your mother. She was planning the engagement party. For well, yeah, son. she thought you were going to be a man. And well, <laughs> it was a big deal. And I was such a little brat because I was just like, I'm not getting any attention. She's not letting me have any part of my boyfriend's birthday. And I was just so over that party and so mad at the world that day. And oh, the pictures prove it. The pictures I will, are... I will put the pictures up. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. But I said yes. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. And the rest of the party was amazing. <laughs> Should have did the cake earlier on. <laughs> We had crazy times there. I mentioned the Halloween party in the last episode. What I didn't mention was you getting drunk and beating people up. I was only beating up one person who now is one of my best friends. And she knows who she yeah. is. I'm not going to give names. I'm sure she knows. I was jealous of her. She was involved in your theater world. <laughs> she was older, more mature. She had that sexy vibe going on. Not like pretty or, or sweet, but like naughty and guys like that and I was just like oh you are not coming into my home 
and flirting with my man. And the funny thing is, years later, we found out there was drama going on with her and another man at this party. Yeah. The entire what time even me? that she was after so bad and was starting drama with someone else. And I was making trouble where the trouble wasn't even at. Uh, but you, you excel at that. I don't know. There was many a uh, party. Was that the same party that your drama teacher asked why I was crawling on the no, floor? No, that, like that was the rap party for the improv right. show. So that wasn't at our house? That was at our house. Because I, I remember someone putting me in a bathtub and calling Laura over Kevin Hoggard to come cool me off. saw you. You were drinking hard liquor and beer, which every anytime you do that, you are gone. But I like both and I can't decide. Right. So you were crawling on the floor... And Kevin, who did, it's funny, he didn't approve of my relationship. Nobody, nobody in that improv he goes, liked me. He, he says to me, "Did she learn that in the army?" They called me a rat in one of your play programs. Yes. When will the rat move out yeah, or something yeah. about you to your about your girlfriend? I was just like, well, here's the thing. I, maybe I'm just insinuating or extrapolating here, but I think the improv people and a lot of the people I associated with. We're happier when I was miserable. Oh, I thought you were going to say we're happier when they thought I was gay. <laughs> well, no, I don't. I don't know because no, because my inner circle, there was no question that I was straight. I was not shy about it. I wasn't going to tell my mother, "Hey, that girl's got a great ass." I'm not doing that. But as far as the comedy goes and performing, I was I was lean and I was angry, and that's where where all of the funny comes from. And I think they were like, if Jeff gets happy, this whole thing will end. No, yeah, here's what I happened. Think they thought no, here's he what happened. Grow up. Jeff got happy, and he finally saw what those people were doing to me. So right. I was like, I got to get out of this. That this somebody is terrible showed you for me. That you, yeah, you are more talented, and bigger and better things around the corner, and you can't stay in college and do plays. Yeah, forever. no, I got that. Uh, yeah, no, I don't I, think you got that. No, until I did. I was there to tell you to get that. I, you, well, maybe. No, I don't totally. know. I completely think that, oh, she's going to make him grow up and get married and have kids and and find other things in life. Well, I'm so sorry, but that's called life. <laughs> and that is exactly what I did and <laughs> exactly what happened. Yeah, you know, I, I talked on an episode with Jeff Whiteman, who's one of my best friends And the only today. one in the improv that ever liked me. Yeah, and, you know, the improv group was supposed to be this big thing. And it just, again, like like most things, like Berg, it just ends in a whimper. One day you're doing it, and the next day you're like, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. There's no big fight. There's no big movie moment. It's just, yeah, I think I'm being used, and I don't want to do it anymore. Well, from an outsider's view, I, I picked up rather quickly that you were far more talented than half the people in it. I, I'm sorry, but that's the truth. And you were given no credit. No credit was given to you. And well, when you love someone and you see that being done, yeah, it makes you angry. Yes, it makes you not like those people. I, what What am I supposed to say? You were better than that. Uh, you know, it, credit is one of those weird things. You, It has to be given to you. You can't But this is a battle we'll never end because in our lives today, I still, even with, with your job now, you don't take enough credit. And I, oh, that's, uh, it's a know, battle that's never going to go away. I, I like doing good work and... It's all good. But I But you know no the issues. difference is is you love knots and knots is good to you. Yeah. And that wasn't happening with college. No, 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 no. College didn't agree with me. So I need to get out. So you could stay at knots for fifty years. I went back even to though my I transformers. Know you're too talented for even Knott's Berry Farm and should be writing and doing way better Aren't things. Aren't you adorable? This is truth and everybody out there knows it. But you know what? If that's where you're happy, I will live in California as much as I hate it. I will continue our life the way it is because it works for you and you're happy. That wasn't the same back then. So That's tell all. me about the glamorous attic. Okay, moving on. Glamorous attic. I have always wanted to do a shop, a store, sell stuff. That's just my thing. I'm a salesperson. It's in my blood. So we actually opened an antique store first. Stage yes. Stop Antiques. We have and stuff on consignment. It's stuff on consignment. You know where I'm going with this? What do you mean? My mother had a best friend. Janet. Janet. JB. Janet. Janet JB, Bagsby. JB. Yeah. J oh, God. I'm doing Berg. Yeah. Stop me. So what happened was people would put tags on the items so that we know who to give credit when right, it got sold. Right. Because we did old school. We wrote up a receipt. Yeah. With the initial JB, $2. Um, right. JRT, $3. Jeff so Mitchell Berg decided one day... 
there was too much stuff from Janet in the store. Right. So he walked through the store going, look at this. Just JB, 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 JB. And, we, and it went on forever. Oh, oh. And then it was always a thing. It was always oh, JB, JB. JB. You know, Janet still has those record books. Yeah. Of every sale we've ever made. <laughs> everything from the store. Yeah. She got all that. Yeah. So one day we'll have to check it and all out. And the store just kind of fizzled because, mainly because I got a job and no one was going to run it. Right. And I can't it was run. It's a lot it. of work sitting it, out there oh, all you, you, weekend. You, you, we, it's eight hours a day sitting and in the we store. We make money for everyone in the house and all our friends, but nobody else would come out and never do anything. Right. So it was a lot of work. And I said I can't do it anymore. I got a job now. Now the the when we did our own store out there, it was more of a hipper, younger vibe. And you're right, we were ahead of the time. Like this store now, with the way vintage stores are. And, oh, if we had oh if we had God. a retail space. That didn't cost anything, and you could yes. sell whatever you wanted. We would, we would, we would clean up. But yeah. back then, we were ahead of our time and a complete anomaly. I knew vintage clothing and funky polyester and things that people were like, "Oh my god, I would never wear that." That someday people would pay to find it and yeah. want to wear it. And we had a lot. We of were it. just too soon. Too soon. Too soon. The big chunky platforms. The you know we had the band posters all over the walls. It was like straight out of a movie. We were. It was a great store. It was awesome. I wanted to buy everything in it. <laughs> I wanted it all. Well, you did. Well, but I meant to keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the store was a lot of fun. And the stories of all the people there, they were all fun. Even the ones I didn't like. And there were some weird ones. Um, I go through our wedding cards now. Because we were married during that time of our life, a lot of the people that lived there were part of our wedding. And like Jay and his dad. Like I have the cards, our actual, you know, congratulations card. You have physical proof that this actually happened. From all these people that signed funny things inside. I like Goofy. He signed his name as Goofy because he's Goofy. He was Goofy, time. right, right. Yeah, it's just, it's just really funny things, but... And, and what people don't know, or might not know, is that you actually worked at Knott's Berry Farm before I did. First. When I moved in there, I knew I needed to get a job quick, because even though I was your girlfriend, your mom was going to charge me rent, and she wanted $50 a week. That was a lot of rent. That was a lot of money, and I wasn't working at all. I had nothing coming in. So, not seemed like a good option, because it was walking distance yeah. there. So, I got my first job in park services, and it really was a good job. It, I mean, I have never looked better. I, I have my old Knott's ID somewhere. Oh, my God. I looked so skinny and tan. Because all I did was walk up the park all well, day. Well, that's the other outdoors. thing. Let's, let's put, we'll pause the Knott's Berry Farm story. Oh, no. And talk about when I met you, you had oh, no. long black going. hair. My and first husband liked black hair. Yes. Had I known it was going to continue with you, I would have quickly dyed my hair before I met you. Because I don't know why guys like me with black hair, but... As our relationship grew, your hair got shorter and shorter. Because he didn't like short hair, and I was never allowed to have it. And there was one, no way well, he would let me One day I come hair. home, and now it's shoulder length. And then the next day, it's a bob length. And then after that, it's... Really short. I always wanted to work that little ska punk hairdo, the little short pixie, the bleached white with the bangs in the front. Yeah, and then you one know, day I came the white home docks and, and the... it wasn't even black anymore; it was blonde. Yes, that was and a that was, blonde. That was and the I day. And I approve of that too. I, well, you took me to get a Disneyland pass that same week. It was our first ever annual pass to Disneyland. Yeah. And I, I look like that in the picture. I was almost going to leave you in Fantasyland. <laughs> you got over it by then. Leave you. He got so mad. He didn't go to the bar like a normal guy when we got in a big old fight. No. I had to find him at Toys R Us. I had to go looking at the Toys R Us's because I knew I'd find him at a Toys R Us. I am not a get home. <laughs> I'm like, he's at a Toys R Us. I just know it. <laughs> so you're working at Knott's. And here's the thing. Wherever you worked, you created drama. Because we, we talked about Movie Land and how you made this horrible I book. I think you need to word this differently. I'm always a well liked person, <laughs> and I I click I, I popular uh -huh. very easily. Uh -huh. So trouble follows popular. Within people. two weeks of you working at Knott's Berry Farm, you you came home and you're like, so and so is my mortal enemy. Because there was a queen bee girl in the same department before me, and I moved in, and I was the new queen bee, and she was not liking it. Because everyone wanted to be my friend, and all the guys wanted me, and she hated me. Right. She that's hated so me. weird. What just just play nice with each other? We ended up becoming friends. 
Play nice. Her name was Jennifer. Who know. was the one that had the Jack Skellington bag that you just wanted to kill and steal her purse? Remember I remember that? the bag. I don't remember the person. Yeah. I have a lot of stalkers at Knott's, which I get now because I know how many locals Knott's gets yeah. and what they're like. Isn't that funny? Now you're one of them. Yeah. But back in the day, oh my God, that local past people, they would just follow you around and try to be your friend. And So we came in the park one day. And we were with uh, Don Berg's grandson, who was about 10. Jonathan. Jonathan. Jonathan looks at you. We, we find you at Camp Snoopy. And what did he say to you? Can we just set up the scene first? Oh, please. It was a beautiful summer day. You guys were off to do something really fun. You come down because I'm cleaning outside or something. You guys can see me. And just to rub it that you're off to go do something fun. And I was just not happy. And I just wanted to go with you guys. So let's put that into perspective before... So, he goes, is that all you do here? You're the trash lady? That was just my excuse. I was like, <laughs> yes, I quit. On the spot. And I was just like, no, I am not a trash lady. I am better than that. And I quit. And then I went to do the fun thing with you. I and then you got a back. job at Movie Land and you can piece that together. I was there for like a year and a half too. I was there a long time at Movie Land. Movie Land. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it too. I met... Movie Land was more high school than even Knott's because it was a smaller business. And everybody was See, really I'm one of those clicky. weird guys that just does their job. Not me. I need to be in the in-group, oh. but I need to be the leader of the in-group. I've never I've wanted to be part of any way. group that would have someone like me in it. Well, that's just me. I'm a I just want to do good work. And... <laughs> so, yeah. Movie so, Land was going so great until... Talk yeah. about <laughs> the end times at the beach house. Oh. Because we've talked about the good times, we've talked about the bad times, and then eventually it has to come to an end. You know what? You would think the way I talk about this place, how hard it is to go back and how much I loved it, that leaving it was a hard time for me. But I don't have those memories. It wasn't a hard time for me. I just found out I was pregnant. We were getting rid of Berg. We were moving on to live with just our moms and not 80,000 people yeah. in a really nice house in Fullerton with a pool. It was like a good... No, it, it, it's important to state that the summer of 1996 was fantastic. Awesome, except for morning sickness. Fantastic. Um, I was a cowboy on the streets in Osbury Farm. Uh, I we swear were living in a house with a pool. All summer. It we was had so MTV much fun. on all day. We watched Jenny McCarthy on Singled Out with Chris Hardwick. Oh my God, we were obsessed with that show. And life was really good up until Christmas. Until well, your mom got sick. It all fell apart, yeah. I think it was it was um, Thanksgiving-ish, right? Yeah, she like, went in around Thanksgiving. Yeah, because we had the baby shower. Yeah. Now that I look back, I don't know why we had the baby shower so early. We didn't have Luke till the end of January, and we had a November baby shower. But I'm grateful that we did, because I probably wouldn't have had a baby shower after. No, no, you wouldn't have had it. it was, right. life, was, life, life was crazy. You know, but your mom was so... I mean, it was the week of her surgery. She was going into surgery. Yeah. And she's like, no, have the, have the baby shower. I'll be out and recovered. It's, I get out the next day. I'll have like a day to recover, and then we have the baby yeah. shower. She was supposed to be back yeah, it didn't happen for the baby way. shower. Didn't work out. No, it didn't work out. But we didn't cancel the baby shower because we didn't really understand the severity of what was going on with her. Right, no, nobody the did. Surgery. Well, was the doctors like two were, days later. We've talked about it. The doctors there was weren't very clear. Yeah. And she was going to have to stay longer. And she was probably going to miss the baby shower. But she was like, don't you dare cancel it. And everybody was like, don't you dare cancel it. Yeah. Mom wouldn't want you to cancel it. Yeah. You have to can not cancel it. So we went through with that. And then it just progressed after that. And I hours. think, you know, after all that's been said and done... Part of the reason she died was losing the circus. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. She thrived on it. Yep. There could it be, too, it's like the grandma at but the I end of parenthood. Say that too, though. Total chaos. You know, and my mother was happy in it. I'm always like, everyone's like, how do you live the life you guys live with conventions and theme parks and going out with friends? You do something every weekend. And I'm just like, oh, I'll rest when I die. And I'm like, I always tell everybody. I'm one of those people. I'm like that. I need that. Well, what, Parties and events. What did David Cassidy say? What was his last words? Oh, I just know that the time you know, I you know? finally slow down would be the day I would die. So I no, don't slow down. David Cassidy just died. Yes. The last words to his daughter? Oh. So much wasted time. Yeah, well, I won't be able to don't say that. Don't that say it all. I, I won't be able to say that. I don't waste my time. No. <laughs> I get forever... I get, a a a antsy if I sit on the couch too uh, No, long. I, that's what I'm saying. I have to be up I, after I, doing I, things. One thing when I go that people are going to say is, my God, I'm so glad she's finally resting. 
Like, I'm serious. I guarantee everyone's going to stand up and say that. Wait, she's taking a break. She's not cleaning or planning a party or at an event or a convention or doing something for her kids. She doesn't know how to stop because that's me in a nutshell. So, I, I don't know. I like being busy like that. I, I wouldn't know any other And how many stuff. times did we go to Sizzler? Your mom likes Sizzler. But you know what? I love that Malibu chicken, so I didn't mind. I I, I've never up. been a fan of the place. I think it's overpriced and the food doesn't taste good. No, they had good. good toast and they had... Um, that Malibu chicken where they melt the cheese yeah, and the ham. ham on the chicken. We went there, I want to so say... Good. We tried. Maybe seven or eight years yeah, ago. Yeah. And we walked in and it was so, so expensive. So expensive. For what, it wa for what it was. I was like, I guess we're not eating here anymore. I'd rather go to Outback Steakhouse or Black mm -hmm. Angus or something or Christen Pits and get a steak. Okay, so the people. I know there's so many that you forgot in your episode... Um, just extensions. Like, yes, you talked about Daniel. Mm hmm And then Daniel had a girlfriend move in eventually. Yeah. Daniel had... Andrea. Daniel had two girlfriends, which bugged me to no end because <laughs> he could get girls and I couldn't get... I was so jealous. Daniel was a good-looking guy. He had a girl... He was just goofier than crap. He had a girl named Jennifer. <laughs> yes. That we called Jennifer Slurpee <laughs> because she had something wrong with her lips. She was a very pretty girl. Oh, no, she was very pretty. But she would talk and she'd go, well, Daniel and I are going to go to McDonald's. And then she'd go... And then we went... And then we went... Yeah. It drove you insane. Yeah. I just wanted to wipe her mouth. And then Daniel dated Andrea. I love To which Andrea. we called them... Still Dan We called them Dandrea. Because they, they had a celebrity couple name. Which she's not going to want to hear us say that. No. She doesn't want any connection to them anymore. But, but they were. They were Dandrea. Um, and... Who else am I not? I know there's so many. Well, you people said that we're not. you corrected me and said Maribeth lived across the way from me when before I moved she in, moved back. Maribeth was next to the bathroom, directly across from yeah. your room. Um, and she eventually, later on, much later on, moved out to that house. She got a boyfriend. Yeah. And they got that place out back. With Scott, they got married. Yeah. Um, but not, not at first. First, she was still upstairs. I'm trying to remember who was all upstairs when I first got there. I think your brother was upstairs too. Yeah. And then I'm trying to remember who I'm missing. People come to my I mind. I don't know. Was Jimmy up there? Because no, I don't think he was there he yet. He was still in prison. Yeah, you're right. I don't think he was there yet. He because came later. In, in the timeline, we got married in the backyard, and Jimmy got married in the living room. Yeah, because Jimmy's wedding was close to the time. I mean, I'd been there a little while, and then he came, and they got married at the house. Yeah. And I remember, I'm like, oh, that's Jeff's brother. I don't know. I remember. I get confused this on my is funny. timelines. See, they did that so thing with people. the candles where they held the candles and light candles. And I leaned in and I said, you're getting married, Jimmy. What are you doing blazing up in here? <laughs> I, I uh, really bonded with um, Angie's little girl, Mandy. She must have been about seven when I moved in. Uh-huh. So I really took to her. She used to wear a t-shirt that said, I've got the homework, homework blues. Yeah. And her other thing, every night it's spaghetti, every day it's spaghetti. Yeah, they, <laughs> she, she didn't would, like spaghetti. She complained all the time. And then she'd always tell me, you're so pretty. You look like Princess Jasmine all the time. So when we got older, I'm like, do you remember telling me I look like Princess Jasmine? Because <laughs> I had my do black hair. Do you remember hair. when they made a movie at the house? Who? Which one? Uh, the college. Some college came and mom <gasps> let them make, make a movie. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of remember that. I, we never got to see it. No. From what we saw from them making it, it was terrible. It was some sort of dinner party where one of the guys was crazy and he kept talking to himself. He would he would do this thing where he would jump in the corner and go, they're, they're talking about us. And he'd jump out of the corner, right? <laughs> and I just remember they were there for like weeks. And I finally said, Ma, you got to kick these people out. they got to finish this movie at some time. We have to get our lives back. And I do believe the house was haunted. I know you don't believe in that stuff. And I don't know what I believe in in this world or not believe in afterlife. I don't know what I believe in. But there was definitely things at that house that cannot be explained. Such as? Noises late at night. People walking when they're not. I mean, literally you hear and see stuff moving, hear sounds, and there's no one in front of you. It's not like you peek your head out the door. I thought I heard something. Like in the room you're in, you hear footprints and there's no one in there with you. And I also saw shadows of like a kid go by really quick and I'd look. Shadows. And um, uh, Mara Beth, I think it was, that always saw the cowboy. There was a guy ghost too. Ghosts of cowboys. No, seriously, everybody at that house has a ghost story, which is a whole nother episode on its own. People could just tell their stories. But I believe there was definitely some craziness going on in that house. So we went back to the house about a year and a half ago. 
And you would think like it's three states away and we don't go because we don't. It's literally two minutes from our house yeah. now. So we, we pulled in and said, let's, let's take a look around, right? And it has a huge sign out front that says, welcome to the California Welcome Center. Like, that's just weird. And immediately, you just started crying. I don't... I think the tears were in my eyes, but I didn't, like, sob cry hysterically until I walked in the back kitchen door, which is now an entrance. Um, you know, they have the little Knott's Berry Farm statues out there. You could take your picture with the cowboy old man yeah. on the bench or whatever. And I, where I got married. Like, this is just weird. So, it's, it's one step away. And, folks, if you want to go see it, you can go to the house where we live with Berg and there's an old man statue that kind of looks like Berg. That's pretty funny. And you could take your picture with him. <laughs> oh, the picture will be. So we walked into what oh, yeah. used to be the first kitchen. It's not there anymore. Now no, it's they just bulldo- an entrance. They bulldozed it, yeah. Yeah, and then we walked into where the real kitchen is. And there's a lady at a counter. And she's just like, hi, how can I help you? Or, you know, And I was like, I used to live here. And that was it. That's when I lost it. Yeah. I just started bawling. And she's like, what? You... Wait a minute. You're that family? Yeah. She's all, do you know people come in all the time and claim to have known your family? <laughs> have gone to parties at this house? I have heard some stories about your family. So They're like, they're all true. In we, fact, they're probably not crazy enough. She, of course, wanted to hear our stories and know what the house was like and what has changed. And so she kind of took us on a walk through. And you're right. Seeing somebody's office set up in your bedroom it's weird, it's weird. yeah um, that was weird to me but then seeing things that would never change like the front door entrance with the metal exactly the same yeah they had an old-fashioned couch up against the stairs just like mom did very similar old-fashioned victorian couch where we sat and did a photo shoot for our engagement and it, we sat there again she took a photo of us in that same spot by yeah. the stairs and reliving those moments i mean i want to do it again if, even though it brings pain and happiness I want to keep doing that like every 10 to 15 years with you until we're old and we have all these photos in that same spot. And then I asked to see your mom's dressing room, which is what you talked about, her closet. Yeah. I don't know why that was one of the hardest rooms for me. I think because I, I know little, what that... They turned into a coffee nook. Well, she said, I said, can I see the room over there? That used to be where his mom, you know, had a closet. You know, it was her dressing room, her favorite room in the house. And she's all, oh, you mean the break room, hon? There's a yeah. microwave and a table and chair in there now and a vending machine. <laughs> so she took us in there and I lost it yeah. because it's just so weird. That it's because... People take a break in there now. They eat a sandwich in my mom's closet. Like It's because the ghosts of the past are still there. They're still sitting around waiting for us, you know? If I can try to put that time period into a paragraph it's like it's like the summer vacation that lasted too long of slip and slides and astro pops and waiting for the ice cream man even though he lives there (laughs) you know what i mean it was all these weird important moments but they're only important because you don't realize they're important and they only become important when they're yesterday and while you're in it, you're like, this is the worst thing ever. Oh, do you remember the chore list? Your mom thought it'd be a great idea to have a list. Oh, yeah. That where everybody well. had to do a certain chore to it keep the house well. up. <laughs> oh, God. I remember the night you came over to move in, you brought a cat with you. And the <laughs> you cat, lost it on the first night. The cat night. went out the window and it never came back. It was the only thing I took. I gave my husband everything. I literally left with the clothes on my back the night I left him. I said, well, I, I don't the want the window furniture. Open. What am I, I don't supposed want the to collectibles. Do? You can have it all. I'm just going to go be happy. I'm in love and I'm leaving you. I just want the cat, which is the one thing he cared about. The only thing he wanted. And I took it. And then I lost it on the first night. Why are you women like that? I don't know. I felt so bad because I really didn't give well, a I shit about the cat. I felt bad too because the cat I don't went know out the I window. I, but see, the, your, your cat goes out the window while my cat comes in the window, because my you're like mine comes in and out. I just leave it open and it goes in. I'm like, okay, <laughs> it didn't quite work. That never came back. Your cat was like. And then like, of course, my ex husband comes over to try to finalize paperwork. He kept coming by. He kept thinking I was gonna come back to him. I think until your brother chased him off the last time. But he's like, can I just see the cat? I just want to visit the cat. And I'm just like, you know, this is three months later. I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of lost the cat on the first night. I was so mean. That's terrible. I know. That, you, that poor, I didn't lose it on purpose. The poor cat. The cat didn't want to be there. It was probably all the crazy people. Keith probably said two questions. The cat ran off. Yes. That's it. It's gone. Goofy came down the hallway or something, you know? 
there was many reasons to run from that house. So let's. I'm going to close it off with with one of my favorite stories from the house. Okay. So when you came to move in, uh, you didn't bring anything except except you brought some debt with you. Right. Yeah. Credit, credit card, card debt. debt. So the phone starts ringing, and it's a guy named Mr. Ozen. I remember that collector <laughs> from JC Penney. Oh my gosh. So you've run up this big JC Penney bill yeah. and this guy Mr. Ozen calls and lot. we th- this is the time where you have an answering machine next to the phone, right? No cell phone. So click Rachel. It's Mr. Ozen. When are you going to call? Jesus doesn't like that you're not paying this bill, Rachel. I remember that. And you'd go, stop calling me. And he'd go, I'm going to call you every day. Rachel, this is Mr. Ozen. So we finally had to call a friend of mine, Greg, who was a bill collector. And Greg said, oh, well, let, me, let me find out who this guy is. And you know, within an hour, Greg's got the guy's home address and everything else. And he calls him and he goes, you got to stop calling the Tuckers, man. They're not interested in paying this bill. And I think it was like, no joke. It was like 80 bucks, right? Yeah, and he's know. going, you're going to burn in hell, Rachel. This is Mr. Ozen. I wish I had those tapes. Do you remember someone that kept calling our house pretending to be Chewbacca? Yeah. So what Do you remember ha- yeah, that? Yeah, what happened was the Knott's employee newsletter... You could put an ad in. So I said, hey, I collect Star That's Wars. Right. I was looking to That's buy people's Star Wars collections. Because right. at this point in time, they were dirt cheap. Right. And I just wanted to buy it all. Well, this guy from... I, he obviously worked in maintenance or night services. So he would call at four in the morning. And he'd, right. he'd go... And you know, here's the thing. I have those tapes still. No, you don't. I do. <laughs> he'd go, hey... Is this where you call about Star Wars? Yes. This is Chewbacca. Rawr, rawr. Oh, I, I want to talk about Star <laughs> Wars. And he would hang up. And he called three or four times in a row. I, I actually, if we ever find a, a micro cassette player, I have that guy oh talking about gosh. being Chewbacca. That's funny. Oh, it's the greatest ever. Good story. It was never a dull moment living on Beach Boulevard in the midst of all the traffic. Let's no. go. Let's go. Uh, Book a party there. I thought about we're coming upon our 25th wedding anniversary and only like a year and a half. And these things take time to plan. So it's got to get started if we were going to do it. But I thought about renewing our vows. I mean, 25 years later, it's a perfect place to do it. So many of our friends now were not around for the wedding. No, no. You know, and how much more special for the ones that were. And we could bring back everyone that lived at the beach house that's still alive and just have a big old party there. I think... With our history of that home, that we could probably sweet talk them into doing it. But then I think of, how, even though it's so much so much happiness, it's still so much pain. Like, I can't even go to that house. You want me to have a party there? I would rather not go <laughs> back, back to, to the old, old house. house. No, it's that weird thing, and I talked about it on the, the previous episode. It's that weird thing, like, it's just a building. It's more than a building. But... It, but the things that we do in it, the actions that we take, the people and the connections and the memories that we make, suddenly it's it's Shangri-La. But I don't know why it's so special. Because we started there maybe? Because we've had many a homes together. And each time represented different things. We started a home when we had Luke. You, me, and Luke. And that was our home. And that home should be just as special to me and on Nod Avenue. That's- and so then, there's something about And then we moved and we had another craziness. child. And we continued our lives in different... Yeah. Like, all these places should have those memories to me. But I could care less. That even even Riverside, which is our first home we bought, and the longest place we've been, where the kids truly feel like they grew up. Josie knows that as her child at home. And I might be kind of like, oh, if I drove by it right now. But, but not like the beach no, house. Wouldn't do what the beach house does. Because the middle part's great. And we don't know what the ending is, but the beginning is where it's we find ourselves. Yeah, I guess it's where so. it is. So I don't know that we would be able to do a party there. I don't think I have that in me. Maybe we should shoot for our fiftieth wedding anniversary. Twenty-five is still too new. Too new. It's too new. It's too, the wounds it's too are fresh. too raw. It's too raw. I don't know that I can handle it. All right. Any final words on the beach house? Um, do you feel like you've gotten your episode out of it? And I haven't even touched on a story. Like there's just layers but do I feel like I represented where we lived yes 
do I feel like, like we told it, we started it. How about that? <laughs> well, there's an obitimitation on 91 Reasons. Anybody for that time period that wants to come be on the show and talk yes. about being on the show, Johnny, Andrea, Mary Beth, Mary Andrea, Beth, Andrea, Jimmy, Jimmy, anyone that was part of those days, even if they didn't live there, Jerry, Jerry was part of the improv. She was there many a night. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know. So many people come to mind and sure, my mind goes sure. blank or whatever, but right, yes, well. that would be fun. Check and it if, out. You've never, if you drive down Beach Boulevard on a regular basis and you never even notice the big mansion right by the 5 freeway across from the Lumber House next to the Whitaker James House, um, it says, Welcome to the California. Uh, that's our home. It will always yeah. be our home. That's where the porch party is. So stop in and say you know us and buy a postcard <laughs> yeah. from my kitchen. <laughs> Take a picture, post it on Facebook if you do. I'd right. go with you, but you, you'd you have a crying mess. <laughs> You're already crying. You're just talking about it. That's so funny. Because it's a very important, a very important place. Thank God it's a historical well, landmark. <laughs> in honor of the memories of the beach house, I would like you to sleep on the couch tonight. Oh, I pretty much do anyways. You're snoring, babe. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for tuning in to this second episode of the beach house saga. I think the uh, interview should be the next one. What interview? We should get interviews to be part three. Why? There's, I, it depends on if they show up in time. I'm not promising it until we have it. Okay, people out there. Come forward. Tell your story. How about your sister? She didn't yeah, live I've in the house. I've been trying to get Jennifer on the show for a year. She was there almost as much. Yeah. She would be a fun one. Yeah. And we need to do an episode about your mother. Yeah, that's a whole nother episode. Because <laughs> I, people who know me, like the a lot of people, she's my bird. She's a lot of people live bird. inside me, and your mother's one of them. You right. know. <laughs> Although I loved my mother, I love my mother very much, but she was quite a character. She was a cantankerous, cranky. Axe. She reminds me of the old lady in that comic strip that they always put on greeting cards that complains about everything. Oh, the shoebox lady? Yeah. yeah. I always miss my mom when I see one of those cards. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but I mean that in the most endearing way. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we, I don't want to get into that now, but we'll get into your mom at some point. Because, I mean, they know my mom. Jeffrey, bring me some iced tea. They know Berg. Oh, la, 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 so they got to get you asshole in there yeah. somewhere. Yeah, your mother. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, well, I am the voice of 91 Reasons. This is my lovely wife, Rachel. Hi. Who is supposed to, should have been in bed an hour ago. I know, I'm going to be so but tired But had to tomorrow. do this episode Because you, we fresh. listened to the other one, and it was fresh in my mind, and thinking about it, talking about it, made me want to talk about it, too. All those people, all those lives, where, where are they, they now? now? All right, thanks for tuning in, folks. This show is called what, Rachel? 91 Reasons. Thanks for listening. My Grand Thar's Hammer will be back with another episode. Live long and prosper. May the force be with you. So say we all. Hey, hey, hey. All right, so we're here at the uh, Stage Stop Hotel, 6601 Beach Boulevard. Uh, we actually used... 6603, uh, which was is that building there when we lived here because the mail was all delivered to that. That's where the antique store was. So, yeah, over there. So we're at the back entrance, which is the California Welcome Center. You can find the house now on Yelp. <laughs> Dedicated as a community landmark, June seventeenth, 2000. And then it was opened, uh, I don't know, what, about five years ago? They opened it up as a tourist destination it's very pretty yeah this is where uh this is the kitchen was the kitchen the yeah. first of two the house had two kitchens this was no this was the this was the second one honey yeah oh i meant if you're entering the house from back behind yeah yeah so rachel and i got married here it's pretty weird think the city's gonna come and throw us out of here there's a camera up there watching us at the end was yeah the it was stage stop antiques when we opened it and there was a pretty good I used here. to come right 
I used to come right out on the roof there and hang out through the window. Oh, yeah. The cats would go in and out the window all the time, yeah. too. It's really weird. It seemed bigger when I first moved in. The spot where we got married is about right over here. So we had an aisle painted. Yeah. Where was it about? It's about right here. About right here because we were to the right of this house. Yeah. We said our vows. Yeah, so right here. I think we were right about here. So. The day I told you that I would be your wife forever. Yes. Isn't that great? And I still mean it. So yes. there's no place more appropriate than to put your ring back on your finger. <laughs> What's happening? There's some plans going on here. I didn't want to go back Surprise. to the beach house. Did you fix my ring? We came full circle oh. 23 years ago in this exact spot. Now I'm going to cry. I put this on your finger. There you go. It's back on. Now it's back on. How did I not notice it was missing from my desk? I don't know. I love well, you, baby. That's beautiful. Love you too, darling. Surprise. All right. Thank you. Look at that. I'm whole again. So, yes, I wanted to show the kids a beach house, but I also wanted that ring to be back, and I thought there was well, no place. Oh, actors and actresses. Oh, oh yeah, you're good. all little creepy uh, <laughs> liars is what you are. Very nice. Surprise. Thank you. It's just a prank, bro. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, it's beautiful. Look at that. Shiny. It looks like day one. Yeah. You know, I, I honestly thought it was always that gold, but yeah, now I know. You know I, I should have pulled Mom aside and been like, hey, Mom, we should have went to the secret beach house, you know, to give Dad the secret ring. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, did you know you, the, the, you would have said, did you bring the ring, Mom? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we got married here. There was a little gazebo with cake here. I didn't know it was Joe like, Harris oh videotaped. Greg we Stone did. took stills. Like, think about all those people. We Why are there so many little the houses? Is this like a neighborhood? Over here. This is where we pose for our pictures on top of the old yeah. cars. Yeah. It's really weird. Why, what's that other house for? Let's walk around in the front. That's the Whitaker James house. So, all right, so we're going to walk around the front here. Watch them move that house down the middle of Beach Boulevard to this spot because they wanted them for home. We're walking now down the driveway. So this was the antique store here. Oh yeah, right here, right on this exact spot, folks. This spot right here is where I told Don, "Hey, I just want to give you a warning. The street sweeping is going to be here in the morning. Don't you warn me." I don't know. You just understand. I'm not like warning you. Just it's just like a verbal like, "Hey, no, you're warning me. I'm not going to have it." Right there. There was a door there and everything. We lost the traffic. You can hear the traffic very loud right now. Oh, yeah. It's Beach We're Boulevard, man. Boulevard. We had this giant porch and we would sit up there and we'd yeah. honk and we'd yell out the cars. Porch party! And people would honk back and we were that family. We're In known fact, 19, that um, 1993, I spent Halloween here. The last Halloween I spent at home. Before I started working at Knott's. So, it's really weird to be back. See my bedroom? Do you have the time to like, open that door? Yeah, entrance around back. Do you know how many times when we made the video? We made yeah, our music yeah. videos and we went in there like over and over. Yeah, we should all take our picture with this sign, Rachel. Right here. Yes, total, total selfie. Everyone get in. All right. I'm going to gonna take a this? picture here. <laughs> get behind it. You're small, so you don't block much of it. Austin, you can find how to block. Take your pictures. We're trying to take a picture here, folks. Bear with us. Mom, but I'm not tall enough. You can reach up by the Ready? Take the... Okay. All right. So there we go. So is there really a cafe in your house down? They all have a cafe you can go eat at? Yeah, I think so. I thought it was another... We um, always there. had a big barbecue house. here, 1993. We had many parties here. A lot of good times. All right, I'm going to sign off on this. Bye-bye.